Hello guys and welcome to a new war game video today by me Vulcan. I am playing on Foldy Gap and today my teammate is Boogie3 and I've been playing with him a lot recently which is awesome. It's becoming quite the regular occurrence. Anyway we're on Boulder map purely because it's the next war game cup match. Not this game specifically but this is the map that is going to be played on. Now the reason I'm not bringing you a war game cup game today is actually because they've postponed the first round. Like my victory still counts but basically what they've done is they've extended the deadline of the first round so now the new round doesn't start till the Wednesday before this video comes out. Now you're probably wondering why I didn't just wait till after then to make this video but honestly I make these videos reasonably far in advance so that I don't get all caught up on my uni work and stuff so sorry about that. Anyway the next week after next week's episode will hopefully be a war game cup video. Anyway today I am well we are using a tactic of staying together on one side you can see the enemy is split up but we stay together on the right side of the map. Now my right side of the map is probably my favourite mainly because I've played it the most and because this map's so bloody large you kind of need to sort of specialise on one side of the map. They are reasonably balanced but the thing is NATO have I think have an advantage on this side and Pact have an advantage on this side because it's basically the same thing but flipped around so you can see here that forest is there and then that town is there so it's like flipped around anyway our strategy was going to be to stay on the right side together and my deck today actually makes use of something I haven't really used before so I'm just going to switch to my perspective for the rest of the battle but basically these guys here M109s these are artillery similar to Abbott's. I decided to cho choose them basically because they have a higher HE power but they have less accuracy. So because I normally use my artillery at close range anyway I assumed that this wouldn't be so much of a problem. Later on I find that they were probably the worst artillery piece in the game. And I'll explain why when we get around to it. But basically, my other tactics were two Lux recon units, a Huey with Delta Force, which would be rushing up to the top of Foxtrot to stop any advance. I've got four patterns, M60 pa patterns, which are the first variant, two Marder Ronin 2s, four AML 60s, a Sultan to capture Foxtrot, four Fooks, four Itos and basically base defense obviously I've got my gazelle cannons and gazelle recon I've got on the left two units of recon infantry two saracens with I believe paratroopers in them and two chaparrales and a hemp with a sultan to capture India now as soon as the game starts a good thing to do on this map is just zoom straight out and you'll see Especially in a multiplayer game, you'll see what their sort of tactic is straight away. So obviously we know that they have both command vehicles in Golf and Lima. Now, at the beginning of this game, we have a huge disadvantage because basically they have superior map control. But the thing is about this strategy is that it makes our forces a lot more concentrated, which is awesome and basically can win you the game. Over here we have my Lux getting into position and my Fux going into the forest above the town in Foxtrot and I ultimately reveal some of the enemy's forces. He's moving a big infantry push right down towards my units. Now seeing this I get my toes into position to snipe as many of the APCs as possible. The ATGMs from these from these vehicles will destroy the infantry inside the APCs as well. So the good thing about doing this is I will be able to take out a lot of units very cheaply. 
Now he does manage to get his units into these hedgerows and starts firing lots of ATGMs at me. And as soon as my ITOs are out of ammo, I move them back into cover. My AML 60s get into range and start to fire their mortars onto the infantry. I've got basically two sets of, of artillery at the moment, so I do have a reasonably big advantage on that front, especially considering he's focused a lot on infantry, which a lot of pack players do, and I don't blame them because they do have very good ATGM infantry compared to the NATO side. Anyway, my patterns on the right side unfortunately get picked off, but the ones on the left I advance to try and get out of the way of all this HGM fire, but they're still being picked off by all the faggots on the right and upper hedgerows. My Lux is keeping eyes on them, however, and it allows my AML 60s to realign their fire onto the right side faggots, which makes them take a lot of damage. Meanwhile, I've set up on the left, and you can see I've got my infantry out up in the north of India and the west of India to check those two places. My artillery continues to pound onto these infantry, causing plenty of death and destruction as I destroy basically all his faggot squads. However, he does bring up some T-80s, and unfortunately, I've already used up all my ATGM vehicles, and I don't have any supply vehicles to resupply them, which is a super bad idea, and I should have really thought about that before it happened. Either way, my Lux is a very good vehicle and does manage to take out that vehicle there, and a lot of the infantry and APCs before it dies. However, the t 80 just continue to advance because they have nothing to counter them and I literally have to just run my ITOs away even though they would be the perfect counter to those vehicles. So if you are doing something similar to me with these ITOs make sure you have resupply with them because otherwise you're doomed from the start. Especially if you use all of the toes up really quickly without actually doing too much damage like I did. Now these M109s are moving forwards basically so I can get more concentrated fire onto these T-80s without being in range. Thankfully my teammate on the right, Boogie 3, brings over some Jaguars and a couple of M8 AGSs to support my left side. I'm obviously not fa we're obviously not facing off against the whole of the team's forces at this point purely because th we know that they've taken both, both sides of the map. So there's going to be something else coming, but these three T-80s are a sizable force of basically the right guy's troops. Somehow my Jaegers, which I use to kind of ambush his T-80s, get a really lucky shot off and manage to snipe one of his T-80s for 90 points, which kind of pays off all of those Jaeger squads. Doing so... Boogie 3 takes advantage of that with his Jaguars and his M8 AGSs to destroy the last two, giving us another 180 points to stay in the lead with 685 total points. Now on the left you can see him getting artilleried very badly and my unfortunately my recon unit gets absolutely destroyed as his corrected shot owns that with his misters. The reason I know they're misters is because I obviously look at these re these replays a few times and I'll just tell you that now because they're very similar. People seem to be using them quite a lot. They, they're basically like Danners but I don't know what the difference is to be honest. They're obviously Russian instead of, of Czech but still. It's it's one of those things. I think they're just a similar unit, just with a different name. Anyway, now I have two units of artillery firing at the same time. 
My M109s are firing towards the Strellas, while my ML, ML60 mortars are firing towards the in infantry further up in Echo. Now on the left I've seen this big force coming up and you'll see me soon bringing in a ton of defences to try and take care of that. My chaparral has a hard time trying to hit his recon helicopter before he does the change altitude and keeps it below the line of the hill so that my guys can't see them which is quite annoying because he takes advantage of that and managed to get a direct hit with his artillery onto my chaparral which has unfortunately no armour. So my mortars continue to fire into the forest while these MO M109s continue to try and pick off these strellas which are slowly advancing across the field. The guy brings forward his MI2 thinking that that was my only anti-air in the area but I just already I still have a chaparral there so I move that out and take down his MI2 before he gets too much recon information about the area because I obviously don't have barely anything to defend there and you're probably thinking well if you saw that big force there why don't you get out of there well I would have if I thought I couldn't have done it later and the reason being India's worth four points and they have four sectors we have four sectors but ours are worth more at the moment if I lose Delta or if I lose India Foxtrot, Delta and Alpha will actually add up to less than their four sectors which will put us at a disadvantage now he does actually manage to hit my second chaparral with an artillery shot as my hemp was planning to go back up and fix it. So I have to bring in another couple just to be on the safe side. So yeah, anyway, if he did push up I would have pulled my sultan down and towards Foxtrot. That's what I would have done. And because of most of his forces were ground he wouldn't have been able to really catch it up unless he got the jump on me somehow where I didn't have a recon but you can see here that my gazelle recon is really all I need to make sure that nothing comes across this bank. Now up here unfortunately my Delta Force get absolutely destroyed by four T-62s. They managed to take out one themselves but ultimately get destroyed by the sheer amount of firepower from those cannons. These M109s are continuing to fire on the Strela that I spotted earlier and my AML60s I've sent back to the FOB to resupply. Now the reason I sent them back and didn't get like a Super Chinook for them or similar was basically because these, these vehicles are really fast and because obviously they're artillery they don't need to be that close to the enemy. They're very accurate because, because they're mortars they don't need to be like that close to have a good corrected shot. So the thing that was the trouble with these M109s that I find really crap about them was that one less accuracy for artillery is insanely like big. It makes the, the actual corrected shot marker a lot bigger than the, say the Abbots was because the Abbots actually have 5 accuracy which makes them a little bit better but they have less HE power and the other thing that was really annoying about them is they took ages to reload and re-aim they took absolutely ages and it allows these TA T62s and T80s especially to get really close fortunately I've managed to resupply and get my ITOs back in time to take out that T-80U which he sent forward straight into an ITO and my two ITOs snipe that and then continue to take out the T the unaccurate T-62s at close range because these things are unlikely to miss at close range with their 10 accuracy. I move this, this recon here forwards quickly that basically down the side of the hill so that if he did get close with his T-62s I could pop that up the hill and shoot him in the back with the auto cannon, which would have really easily destroyed his troops. Here you can see he's brought up an, another MI2 to basically look out for any defenses that I may have 
I drop off some more paratroopers and send the Saracens with their machine guns on them to go and attack that MI2. And I can obviously see his T-62s lined up there. But as Boogie 3 brings in an Apache to take care of that, he doesn't really spot the Strellas, but fortunately pulls it off knowing that they're there. Now he's managed to send for, forward some more HGM infantry in APCs to take care of my last pattern. Boogie 3's Apache spots a rush from the right side. Well, it was spotted by my 2E rep, but the Apache luckily was here to stop that from doing too much damage. I've seen this guy like to use a mix of HGM infantry and anti-air infantry. Luckily he manages to rout their AA infantry before they can do serious damage. But as soon as I spot them I retarget my M109s to give them a good barrage because the HE power will seriously damage them. And at that point it makes Sven Jensen who was playing on the right side surrender because he's lost most of his troops and the left guy rock soldier the one who's left on his own is pushing up into India and unfortunately meets at the Apache of B3 who takes out a couple of units before he flies away from them. Now he pulls down these TO-62s which are flamethrower tanks straight into my paratroopers and, and looks but unfortunately what he doesn't realize is that he's focusing firing my recon which gives my paratroopers a great amount of time to shoot at least a couple of them before they get owned by the flames they take out the last flame tank and my chaparral shoots down a MI2 recon. My pattern manages to get further up and shoots a t shoots at the T62s but unfortunately he's outnumbered and gets destroyed. So at this point my sultan's still there. I know that even if they come into the forest I'm not going to be too worried because I can just slip out the back of it. My AML 60s are re-aiming onto their targets and my M109 artillery are driving back to base to get re-armed. Here you can see he sends forwards his BTR 60s on the left to use his machine guns to shoot my chaparral which is a very good idea and is a good thing if you're playing packed and you want to get rid of chaparrales, just send APCs to them because machine guns will kill them because they have no armor. And if I just info you, info them, look, you can see they have zero front, zero side, zero rear, and zero top, which will basically mean that they're fucked if they get shot at by anything. This pattern unfortunately takes a huge beating before being force routed by Fort and Guskas with auto cannons. And I retarget my artillery to take care of them as quickly as possible. I have to eventually move my mortar carriers though, as he starts to arty them with his bigger arty. Boogie 3 gives me the tip to move back in India rather than just leave completely. And I take his advice, it's probably not such a good idea to be sitting there with no defence in front of it and his T-62s disappearing into the forest. So what I do with his Spartans full of fusiliers pushing into India, I basically hide it in one of these hedgerows. He did meant say to put it all the way back here, but unfortunately these hedges don't actually cover my CV well enough for it not to be spotted. So that's why I chose this one here and also it means that I can hide infantry in the 
the village if needs be. So anyway, luckily while that push was happening, Boogie 3 was bringing across some reinforcements to help me out, which is awesome. We are currently winning at this point by 1,448 points to 879 points. This wasn't so much like a serious game. The reason I showed you this one was because it was one of the ones I found most fun. And hopefully that will come across during your viewing. Anyway, he brings up some MI-24Ds now to basically help him gain air superiority in the area. He managed to take out my chaparral, unfortunately, which was the only air defense for me in the area. But I do know that Boogie 3 over here has two Marder Roland 2s just waiting to see some action. They start firing and take out a couple of MI-24Ds for a nice chunk of 60 points each. Nice job bringing up those Marta Roland 2s and Boogie 3. In the meantime, my M109s are firing onto his supply vehicles on the right to just do as much damage as possible, basically. Obviously re resupplying something, so if it's anything around them, then they're going to probably die. Here you can see that he's using M MI-24Ds to try and take out infantry. That's actually a supremely bad idea. It's just as well that the Spartans and Fusiliers aren't doing that much damage. It would have given him plenty of time to pull away from that, but unfortunately he kind of forgets or just doesn't want to as the auto cannons from the MI-24s continue to pound the Fusiliers, which actually don't take that much damage. As a response to his MI-24Ds, I bring up four Gazelle cannons and take down both of them. Boogie 3 also joins me with a couple, both taking the same sorts of initiative to take care of those. He obviously did have these Marderonin 2s here, but considering we were bringing these in, we felt it was, it was only necessary to do that. Now, of course, I forgot about the Tunguskas I met earlier and focus fire his recon helicopter as quickly as possible before all of my gazelle cannons get shot down. I know it's pretty much inevitable that they're all going to die, so I try and take down this gazelle recon as quickly as possible, moving it slightly back out of the line of sight of Tunguskas just so I could get the last few hits off before the gazelle cannon gets shot down. Now I've brought in my own paratroopers now to try and take care of some of the units that are left in the forest. Took out a couple of T-62s there and my pattern on the right bumps into four T-62 OBRs. My paratroopers managed to destroy these Tunguskas reasonably easily with their rockets. That one squad manages to take out two Tunguskas before getting destroyed itself. Over here, Boogie 3's M8 AGS tanks are taking care of those T-62s over there. And basically, the good thing about these tanks is you have to keep them at range. They're, they're pretty awesome tanks and they move really fast and they're good for flanking, but unfortunately they don't have much armor, but they have an insanely good gun if you keep them at range. Now over here, I basically ping that defense there to t to tell him about these T-62s which are getting supremely close to his M8 AGS's. Unfortunately one gets taken out because as I said they have low armor and they only really work against cheap tanks at long range because otherwise they just take too much damage and die. So with the gazelle cannon that survived the Tunguska rape in the forest, I send that over to basically force push the T-62s back into the forest, helping his M8 AGS stay alive. So at this point you can see that we now own five sectors, all on the right side of the map. Obviously these two are in the middle. But we started on this side and then we slowly pushed across the map 
as we realise the attacks are going to be coming from the left side now. Now with that, take out the last Tunguska. The three T-62s I kind of forget about and I do bring in some reinforcements as you can see here, a couple of chaparrales, a couple of units of paratroopers to defend India from any future attacks. So now there's a bit of a break and obviously we can see these T-62s coming up the road here on the left side because of B-3's Gazelle Recon and he does respond to that by sending a couple of Apaches over there to take them out. I also help him with some artillery fire, but unfortunately, due to the really slow aiming time of these guys, I completely miss. And because that was where I was predicting they were going to go down this road here, but by the time they got to here, my arty was only just starting to fire at there. So you can see just how slow the aiming was because I was aiming ahead of the T62s as well. Boogie 3's Apaches make short work of those T-62s, making that threat completely gone. On the right side you can see I brought in a couple of Gazelle cannons from the right side of the map at our reinforcement point. And I'm searching for his command vehicles. And look at that. I ping to show Boogie 3 just what he shouldn't do ever. And that's leave a UAZ unprotected. Seeing that UAZ unprotected basically tells me that he's going to have more unprotected. So what do I do? I send this gazelle cannon straight up the middle of the map. That's the one that survived from the Tunguskids in the middle. To go and scout out hotel for another CV which is possibly undefended. And as I get closer to the forest, what do you know? There's another unarmored UAZ waiting to be shot by my gazelle cannon giving us another 200 points that's 400 points just from undefended cvs pushing my luck i get together my gazelle cannons and push them across into lima now obviously these HGM infantry have been here for a reasonable amount of time now in the match. I'm bringing up these Fooks to try and push up into Gulf originally and basically to stop them getting sniped by HGMs I push pull them past the town out of line of sight and into this forest. Now on the left here you can see that he does finally have this last command vehicle defended and both my gazelle cannons fail at shooting that. On the right side my gazelle cannons trying his luck in echo but unfortunately the strellas which I was trying to shoot for half the match with my artillery take them down. I pull out my fooks from the forest and engage in a huge firefight with these troops that are left over here. The thing is with his infantry was that it was not built for infantry on infantry combat so with my Jaegers there with their G3 rifles I'm going to do a lot more damage than he is with his AK-74s. Now meanwhile while this is going on I am actually firing at them with my M109 with corrective shot. You can see though a couple of shots land very close to my Jaegers but my Jaegers do a really good job of taking out all of the combat troops in the area, capturing a supply truck and resupplying themselves a little bit before that runs out of respy. Now as soon as that's done, I stop the barrage and that was the last couple of shells landing there as I push my APCs forward to take care of these BTRs. Uh, but on the right, he brings in a couple of units, obviously forgetting about the reinforcement point being taken over and that loses the, ma the match 
us winning by 3,561 points to 1,410. Now both our opponents are extremely low level compared to what I would normally be playing but because it was a fun game I wanted to show it to you guys so I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. This wasn't so much a show of skill but more of a show of having a good time and basically showing you tactics and hopefully helping you out a bit with some things you probably shouldn't do and things you can do to help you win a game. Anyway, yep, yeah, hope you enjoyed it guys. That was a 26 minute match, not too long. Not as long as my last game anyway. <laughs> but yeah, hope you enjoyed it guys. And um, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.